I figured you'd come. I figured you'd come join us eventually. I'd like to welcome everyone this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Terry uh, told me last week he wasn't going to be here, so uh, he said uh, I was up. Uh, so hopefully. Uh, um, I remember how to do this. But uh, do we have uh, anyone as far as visitors that would like to be recognized today? We do have some visitors. Whether you want to be recognized or not, good to see you. I've stood up a lot of churches. Yeah. Big thanks to my wife, Mary, and Sandra Hines. And I'm sitting up here today. And they both keep a good eye on Yeah. We need that, Dave. I <laughs> do. Yeah. Do we have any joys that we'd like to share this morning? And the joys of families gathering today. Yeah. Yes. Well, it is. It is, of course, Mother's Day, and I see that there are some snacks back there. And so it is a joy, of course, um, all of our mothers are, are a joy uh, to us. And of course, uh, they support us in, in well, everything we do. Uh, but uh, it, it is a special time today, of course, to spend some time remembering them. And uh, of course, spending some time with them. Uh, a lot of them, especially the, the mothers that have older children, uh, some of the most valuable things, I think, <clears throat> nowadays that they can actually receive is actually just you spending time uh, with them. So make some time to visit with your mother today. The um, announcements uh, for today, our prayer family for this week uh, is uh, Rex and Brenda Fisher. And so if you'll keep them in prayer. Uh, we have been uh, streaming online movies uh, that are free on our website and tonight's movie at 7 p.m. is Elizabeth's Gift. Uh, so if you'd like to watch that, the, uh, just go to our website and then go to uh, the weekly movie nights and it streams there at 7. Uh, we are, uh, the Heartland uh, Conference of the Global Methodist Church is going to be meeting here at the end of the month and so Susan and I will be traveling to that. There's a, a note about that. Uh, but um, they've asked us to be in prayer for the conference, uh, not just the Heartland Annual Conference, but also at that conference we'll be selecting delegates to represent the Heartland area at the convening conference of the Global Methodist Church, which will be in Costa Rica. And so uh, they've asked for prayers for that as well. I would ask you to pray for Tyson, who has submitted his application to represent the Heartland area by going to Costa Rica. So be praying that he's elected because I think he would be an awesome representative of the Global Methodist Church. Thank you. Uh, Monday night we have Bible study out here in the Fellowship Hall at 6.30. And I, Proverbs, is that what they're in? I'm not for sure, is, it, is that? I believe they're in Proverbs. Uh, then our uh, group that meets down at Madison on Wednesday, 9.30, uh, the 15th, uh, there will be, of course, a free movie again. This one uh, for next week is First Responders, and it'll be on Friday night and Sunday night at 7. Uh, we have a staff past pastor parish relations committee meeting next uh, Sunday, the 19th at 3 in the afternoon at Madison. And then we have a ladies' fellowship on the 21st at 6.30. Uh, we have a men's breakfast out here at 8 o'clock over in the fellowship hall on the 25th. And we already talked about the general conf or the, the annual conference. Uh, the other note that's in the bulletin there is the annual fishing tournament uh, will be on the 21st and 22nd of June. And uh, there will be, of course, a lot more information coming up about that, and, and Doug is kind of one of the ones that heads that up. But uh, the uh, dates are there, and there are some flyers if you want to take one and put it out around somewhere or let people know about it. Uh, the only other announcement that's not on the bulletin there that I've got, Rob uh, Schmutz, as, as 
his uh, ministry, uh, Ministry Outdoor Adventures. He has been uh, every year doing a, a Father's Day raffle. And so there's a poster flyer up back there about the raffle that he's doing this year, but there's a rifle, there's a guided bear hunt, and then there's some Leopold uh, binoculars on there. If you would like a ticket for that, let me know, and I've, I've got some tickets that I can get you. Uh, they're $10 a piece. And other than that, are there any announcements that you guys have that I didn't have on the bulletin? Yeah, I have two. Uh, the first one I might mention is for those of you who don't know Pastor John, he just uh, finished his uh, doctorate degree, and so he is graduating, and so we have a card back there that we thought would be nice to send from our congregation to Pastor John, so it's on that middle table if you guys want to sign in. And the second thing is we have some cookies back there for the moms for Mother's Day. So please, the mothers of the church, please go back there. There's either chocolate chip or their story. Any other announcements? All right, well, hearing none, then what about birthdays this week? <laughs> Ben's is today. Oh. Ben's birthday is today, huh? All right. Ben, how old are you? Ben. Ben, how old are you? How old? Four years. Four? 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 Wow. Wow. Cool. Wow. Do we have any other birthdays besides Ben? All right, well, we're going to sing to you, Ben. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Do we have any anniversaries that we need to celebrate this week? Well, seeing none, if the children would come forward, we'll have the children's message.
I miss my grandparents, but I am very happy that they are with God right now. And in difficult times, when we lose somebody, we need to be there for our friends, for our family, and for our church. So I want you to practice saying, I am here for you. So, will you go down there and talk to those two? And will you talk to these two and say, I am here for you. I am here for you. <laughs> well, so that is just what Jesus said. He said, you are going to be just fine because I am sending you a helper, a comforter. And someone who will be there with you, the Holy Spirit. I'm going to put the Holy Spirit in your hearts, into every Jesus believer heart. Let's pray. Dear God, we want to thank you for Jesus. Thank you for, for uh, who you are and what you're helping us to become. You have promised to be with us always. We thank you for not leaving us on our own. You have given us the Holy Spirit and one another. Help us to remember we need to be there for one another and to help us show our love and support for each other. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our opening prayer, have you would join me. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You display and set your splendor over the heavens and the earth. As children so easily accept the mysteries of your wonders, assist us through the power of the Holy Spirit to praise you, honor your ways, and be captivated in awe by the mystery of the unseen man. Amen. Our opening hymn, uh, Open Our Eyes, Lord, once again, uh, we'll sing, two, sing it through twice, and it is on page 2086 in the Faith We Sing. First of the scriptures this morning uh, comes from the uh, Acts of the Apostles, uh, the first, first chapter, verses 1 through 11. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. And after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom the Spirit, to whom he had also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during forty days and speaking the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, 
Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taking up from you into heaven will so, come, will so come again in a like manner as you saw him go into heaven. And then from the epistle to the Ephesians, the first chapter, uh, verses 1 through, or excuse me, verses 15 through 23. Therefore, I also, after, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding uh, being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, <clears throat> not only in this age, but also, also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave, to him, gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And then would you please stand for the reading of the gospel. This morning the good news comes from Luke, uh, the 24th chapter, verses 44 through 53. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things might be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms according to to me, or concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it is necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you have endured have until you are endued with the power of uh, from on high and he led them out of Bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them and now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven and they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God this is the word of God for the people of God Thanks be to God. Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, so good to be here with you worshiping today on this Sunday that's a bit cloudy. I hope we hear the, see the sun for a little bit, but um, rain is always good too later. So may you all be blessed this day. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, may the words that you've given me to speak today and the meditations on our hearts and minds gathered here this morning, may all these things be pleasing and acceptable to you. For, O oh Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Come, Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, as you listened to our scripture readings from the Gospel of Luke and the sequel, Acts, the book of Acts, did you hear how Jesus' disciples and their entourage reacted 
when Jesus Christ ascended right before their eyes. Jesus had been appearing to them several times over a period of 40 days after his crucifixion, death, and resurrection. Jesus had been speaking about the kingdom of God during those times. Jesus had been standing there present before them, showing them his flesh and bones, scars and all, even his hands and feet. He had said, look, touch and see, it is me. Jesus had been eating a meal of fish with them, and Jesus had been reminding them of all the prophecies he had fulfilled. Jesus had given them instructions to be witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and all Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus has promised them the gift of the Holy Spirit who would be sent to them, giving them power to carry out this mission. And Jesus had blessed them with upraised arms. And then, with his arms still upraised, Jesus bodily ascended right before them during the blessing. His body did what was impossible for any human. He came up off the ground. He arose into the air above them. They watched his movement intently. Can you imagine? Do you suppose his hair or cloak got ruffled in the breeze that might have been blowing that day? Did they focus on his toes or the sandal soles? Or did they focus on his face and the love that he, they saw there? Whatever their focus, Jesus was ascending and he ascended until his body was hidden from them by a cloud and they could no longer see him. Yes, he was taken up into heaven right before their very eyes into the unseen realm. Now Luke, often known for his other vocation as a physician, was known for his attention to detail in writings. And so he recorded this special event of Jesus' ascension with much detail. You could almost say this pivotal event acts as a hinge or a bridge that connects the two books that he wrote, the Gospel of Luke, that tells of the life of Jesus, and then the Acts of the Apostles, which tells us of the life of the early church and the beginning spread of the gospel to the world. It was important to Luke to record the apostles' reactions to Jesus' ascension. Not only did he record them watching with intensity, he recorded how they worshiped Jesus with great joy. This spirit of worshipful joy followed and stayed with them as he returned to Jerusalem, as they returned to Jerusalem from the vicinity of Bethany where this had taken place. And then they journeyed back to Jerusalem in obedience with Jesus' instructions. There they continued in celebration and prayer as they waited for the Holy Spirit to come. Yes, it was truly a cause for celebration and I want to explain why today. While we often recite in the Apostles' Creed, he ascended into heaven and is sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Sadly, the day of ascension is often not focused upon in the church today. However, our founder, John Wesley, he preserved Ascension Day as one of the very few non-Sunday observances that should be celebrated in the life of the church. This year, Ascension Day was on Thursday, just this last Thursday, May the 9th. Forty days after Easter and ten days before we celebrate the day of Pentecost. Ascension Day marks not just something about Jesus or the church, but about the scope of salvation for the whole universe, victorious over sin and death, through the cross and resurrection, Jesus 
ascended to heaven to assume the fullness of his reign as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Glory. Hallelujah. In my study of the ascension and these texts, I also came across so many other reasons for celebration. Namely, I want to loosely relay four reasons outlined by Reverend Dr. Peter Davids, who has written many books and commentaries on New Testament theology and taught biblical studies at several seminaries. So let me share what I learned from him. We must always remind ourselves that Jesus was fully divine and fully human. Luke told us in his gospel of how Jesus, God incarnate, came to be with us. He was divinely conceived by God and delivered into the world by his human mother Mary. God himself chose to step from the spiritual unseen realm of the heavenlies into the seen reality of our human realm. And so we could perceive him and learn from his son, Jesus. So the first reason is that since a truly human Jesus has ascended to heaven, human being or beings can also ascend there. John 14 verse 2 tells us Jesus went to prepare a place for his followers. And Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, the hope of those who are in Christ is that they will eventually ascend to be with him. Jesus has ascended to guarantee a place for us in his spiritual unseen realm. And this is a cause for celebration. Second, the ascension proved that the sacrifice of Christ was finished and accepted by God. As noted in Hebrews, Jesus passed through the heavens or the skies above until he was out of sight, behind a cloud. What happened at the moment is that his resurrected body form, bodily form, made transference behind a cloud from the seen reality to the unseen reality of the spiritual world. Jesus entered back into the presence of God. J.D. Walt writes for the Wake Up Call devotional that I've invited all of you multiple times to follow. And he gave an illustration to describe what happened in that moment. He held up his Bible in one hand, and then he held up two fingers in his other hand. And then he said, let's think about the difference between invisible and unseen. Then he moved the two fingers behind the Bible and asked, are my two fingers invisible now? No, they are just unseen. There is a spiritual heavenly realm right here, all around us. It is not invisible, but it is just unseen. Just like the air that we breathe is real, but unseen, Jesus is right here with us. Remember, Jesus promised in Matthew 28, verse 20, right after delivering the Great Commission to his disciples, he told us that he would always be with us to the very end of the age. Heaven is not so much a place up above, but rather the human expression for where God resides. All around us, just through the thin veil between reality and reality, and spiritual reality. Jesus ascended so we could continue being with, that he could continue being with us and enter into the presence of God, which is described as the inner sanctuary of the heavenly temple, the real temple for which the one on earth was a copy. Having bought a single, once-for-all sacrifice for God, Christ sat down at the right hand of God, showing that no repetition of his sacrifice is ever again necessary. This, too, is cause for celebration. Third, think again of Jesus, the divine human being with God in heaven, 
who sympathizes with humanity and can therefore intercede on humanity's behalf. Jesus has experienced everything that humans have experienced. Birth, growth, temptation, suffering, and death. And therefore he can serve effectively as an intermediary before God in heaven. Christ's ascension assures us believers as part of the body of Christ in the church that God understands the human situation and that Christians can therefore approach him boldly in their prayers according to Hebrews 4 verse 14 through 16. Let us celebrate daily as we enter boldly into the relationship with God in prayer. Fourth, without the day of ascension there would be no gift of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Our text today told us of how Jesus told his disciples that God the Father had promised them this gift. In John 16 verse 7, it also records that Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Without the ascension, the church would have Jesus locally, stationary, in one place, not spiritually present wherever two or three are gathered. The ascension allowed Jesus to become the head of the church, the spiritual, unseen realm. At Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit would then be sent to empower the church, the body of Christ, in the seen reality of this world to be witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And the Holy Spirit did come, and still comes, empowering new believers in Christian life, death, resurrection, and ascension to witness still to all today. Jesus, our King of kings and Lord of lords, he has ascended to his rightful throne. When we allow him to be the absolute perpetual ruler, the king of our life, our family, our church, we can trust God for our entire provision and needs. With God leading us, our wills and goals will be realigned with God's kingdom priorities. And we too will have power to be witnesses to and models of the kingdom of God. I see this power present in this church, our church. I praise God for Jesus' ascension. I praise Jesus for, for sending us the Holy Spirit. Praise him with me. Praise God we have every opportunity to celebrate together Jesus' ascension. Therefore, in an attitude of celebratory prayer, let me pray these words of thanksgiving from Scripture over all of you. They were the originally written words of the Apostle Paul to the church he planted at Ephesus. It is recorded in Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. You've already heard the words, but let me pray them over you. Ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus, your love for all of God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope in which Jesus has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. And that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly realms. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it's time now to share with the congregation um, 
anything on your heart, prayer concerns, prayer requests, how can the congregation be there for you? How can the congregation be praying for you and your friends and your coworkers and family or what's on your hearts? Holy and glorious God, we praise your name and we humbly come before you to offer to you those whom we care about, specifically Eileen. Lord, we ask you in your mercy to heal her quickly from bronchitis. Clear up those lungs. I know she's also been suffering from vertigo too, and Lord, I just help her to keep her stable on, on her feet. Uh, but may her lungs be soothed and she get well quickly. Lord, we pray for the Brian Miller family. You know their sufferings and um, their grief and all that they're going through. And so, Lord, we ask you to be present with them, Holy Spirit. Comfort them and soothe them. We also pray for all those who have not been mentioned. I know that there's many um, concerns on our hearts that have not been mentioned today, so we lift them up to you silently. God, in confidence of your guiding prayer, we pray for our world, for all of our leaders and the people across the nations. May they exercise a spirit of wisdom and shield all who suffer from the terrors of violence and war and disasters. Bring them to you safely, to a new life in you. Risen Lord, we pray for all who long to experience the immeasurable power of your love. Open our hearts to sing your praises and to share the story of your blessing that all may come to know your living and ascended Christ. Merciful God, bless your people everywhere with food, shelter, health care, and employment sufficient for flourishing. May they thrive and be filled with the riches of your grace. We pray for all in sickness or in need and their caretakers. May they know your healing love and power of Christ to bring life in the most difficult times. Keep us mindful of the hope and great power that we have in you, our ascended unseen King and Lord our Jesus. As you taught us to pray, we pray together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it's now time for our ushers to come forward and collect our offerings, our gifts, and our tithes.
Father, we rejoice in your faithfulness. As you promised, your glorious spirit inspires a new way of life to the Church of Jesus Christ. We trust that if we continue to devote ourselves to prayer, you will strengthen our congregation in missional outreach, direct our gifts and offerings for the purposes of your kingdom, O God. We pray through Christ, who ascended on high to your eternal throne in the heavens. Amen.
Are you looking for a church family, some place that you can call home? Well, consider joining our Ebenezer family. There's no dress code at Ebenezer. We welcome the person, and we don't worry about your wearing what you're wearing. The dress code is mostly going to be country casual. If you want to wear your Sunday best, though, please do so. But if you've been out doing chores, well, just stop on in. The only suggestion that we have is if you've been out working in the cattle pens, please scrape your boots and clean them off before you come in the building. We have weekly opportunities to worship and to be in fellowship with the others at the church building. Sunday worship begins at 9 a.m. in the sanctuary and then is followed by our Sunday uh, school classes, which are for all ages starting at 1025. The adults meet in the fellowship hall, while the youth meet in the sanctuary and in the classrooms that are behind our sanctuary. On Monday evenings, we have a prayer meeting at the church prior to our Bible study. We pray for those who are on our prayer list from Sunday, as well as for other needs as the Holy Spirit leads us. If you're looking to get closer to God through His Word and learn more about the Bible, Boy, have we got a deal for you. On Monday nights at 6.30 in our fellowship hall, we have a Bible study that is led by Merle and Joan Rothwell. They choose a book of the Bible, and then they go through the Word of God verse by verse and chapter by chapter. Merle and Joan have studied underneath rabbis and other Jewish leaders, so they understand some of the Jewish traditions in a way that some of us Christians have never heard before. So come on out and join in the Bible study and learn about what the Old Testament has to say and what the New Testament has to say for us Christian believers today. On Tuesdays, in cooperation with the Little White Church down in Olpe, we have an opportunity for the kids during the school year to go to All God's Children. All God's Children starts after school at 3.35 p.m. and ends about 4.45 p.m. They need you to come pick the kids up then, but it's a great time for the kids to learn more about God. On Wednesday nights, for our youth from junior high age to high school, the Ebenezer Youth Group meets at 7 o'clock p.m. out in our fellowship hall. We also have monthly opportunities. Our ladies meet on the third Tuesday of every month, and they have fellowship together. So if you'd like to learn more about the Bible and hang out with the ladies, well, come on out and join the ladies at 6.30 p.m. on the third Tuesday of the month. The guys, well, any time that we're involved, we have to have breakfast. So there's a breakfast for the guys. We start breakfast at 8 a.m. on the third Saturday of the month. And then after breakfast, which normally finishes up about 8.30, we go ahead and have a short devotion. We're finished by about 9 o'clock so that you can go on and continue with your day's activities. So men, go ahead and come out and join us for the men's breakfast if you like. The church is located four and a half miles west of Olpe on Road 70. If you want to come out, just leave Olpe headed west. The pavement ends after about two miles, so you'll continue for about another two and a half miles on gravel. You'll see the church on the north side or the right-hand side of the road as you're coming out from Olpe. We really would like to ask that God bless you exceedingly and abundantly, and we sure hope that you'll consider coming out and taking a look at Ebenezer Church, visiting us, and maybe even choosing to become a part of our family. We hope to see you soon. God bless.